So I finally got the uh, starter motor out and uh, as you can see here this is the starter motor that's uh, faulty and uh, I've also opened the starter motor to see what was actually causing the issue um, this gear is supposed to be down there by the way that's uh, because I've taken some of the bad components out um, the reason it's uh, faulty is because it has uh, on the base uh, where did I put this now Okay, so um, it has on the base basically this uh, plate here, which has got the two carbon connectors that uh, power the armature. And um, basically one of them is actually broken, um, which is this one here from the base. And because it's broken, what was happening was um, it was creating a short circuit uh, at the back. And that was overheating the whole motor from the inside, which was causing the smoke that I could uh, detect in the car. Um, and that would normally, I mean, you could fix this quite easily by just replacing this unit. But what happened is, this has been overheating for so long that inside the um, actual coils on both sides... Um, the power that create the magnetism for the um, for the motor to crank um, they have got um, a lot of carbon at the back and they were pretty much um, almost disintegrated I've taken some pictures which I'll post uh, on the website and um, you can you'll be able to see that it was quite badly damaged which is why this starter motor wasn't working properly and um, and basically eventually it started giving up because um, it wouldn't make proper contact but also what I found was that this was actually pretty much stuck at the back because of all the um, all the stuff that actually was burning was uh, getting jammed in the spring at the back here which wasn't allowing the um, carbon point to come out and make good contact with the um, with the uh, armature I believe it's called it's the um, the spindle in the middle the power so to create the magnetism to rotate the uh, motor and that's basically this this was stuck back here and it was already broken so I've decided not to actually repair this I've got a new motor coming uh, tonight uh, it's already been delivered I just need to go and collect it so once I get that I will uh, record I will demonstrate the difference and also when I first took the motor out I could see that the um, motor was quite stiff um, because of all the deposits inside from the carbon. It should be reasonably smooth. You shouldn't have to uh, apply too much force. Um, and this is the solenoid and basically what that does, that lifts, lifts the, um, the, the, uh, uh, the cog further up as it's spinning and cranks the engine and once the engine has started and ignition is stopped, this actually goes back to its normal position. So it's the magnetism that controls the lever which, um, as a matter of fact, I think I've, yeah, I've kept it out so I can show that. So it's just this part here, um, and this sits inside the uh, inside the solenoid, and as you can see, it just literally lifts the uh, the cog up to uh, crank the engine. Okay, so that's the motor out. But well, what I'll do is uh, I'll share what other components I had to actually take out to get to the uh, starter motor. Now initially I suggested two pipes in the previous video. Uh, those were not the two pipes that I had to actually disconnect. Uh, I had to just disconnect this. I've kept the two bolts uh, attached to it. The pipe on this side comes from the front uh, radiator and uh, I'll show that in, in a minute. So I, all I had to disconnect was uh, just this component here, uh, loosen the, the two um, metal pieces, metal um, uh, rings on each side, so that the pipe would come off, and uh, and this is basically a uh, this is to hold the, uh, the the battery lead that comes from the uh, from the battery in the front, and these two bolts. Now these two bolts are for the air conditioning pipes, and I'm just going to show that to you where uh, where all of this goes. So this is what the uh, uh, what the vehicle looks like now. I'm just going to put some um, light there. And as you can see, uh, there's the air conditioning compressor and the starter motor was down here. Now, 
online it suggested that you don't have to take the um, air conditioning pipes out in order to get to the starter motor and I would agree however it is quite difficult now as I was going through the diagnostics I also realized that this car doesn't have any um, any refrigerant gas in the um, air conditioning system and so I took um, I took some tests uh, at the front of the car which I'll record in a separate video um, and that told me that showed me that there was no gas in there anyway. So I thought, since there's no gas, I might as well disconnect these two pipes. And when I disconnected these two pipes, um, it made the whole job easy, um, incredibly easy. I mean, uh, as soon as I had lifted these two pipes, out, I could actually disconnect the motor at the back. So I just want to show you. So if I actually bring the motor up here, so you can imagine the motor actually sits something like this, uh, right at the back. And the difficulty I had was uh, actually disconnecting, sorry, it goes on like this. Sorry, it sits in like that, just behind the pipes. The difficulty is actually disconnecting this this here, um, this bolt, so that you can release the main uh, battery lead. Uh, this is the connector for the solenoid, it, power, it charges the solenoid and makes the connection in order to uh, spin the uh, starter motor. So disconnecting this was the challenge um, because there wasn't enough space and I mean I could have done it but because I actually re ended up removing the uh, air conditioning pipe it made the whole job very very easy. As soon as I put that, pushed that out of the way along with the other two pipes that I disconnected uh, that I've, which I've shown you um, the starter motor came out quite easily. Now the starter motor uh, once um, once I knew that this is now going to be easy, um, I couldn't pull it out um, uh, easily. So what I did was I put the bolts back in the two holes here. This is where, if you if you recall in the previous video, is uh, where the um, uh, where the fan and all the other components were. So I put the bolts back in and left them loose and just very gently, you know, tap the the front. Uh, with a very small hammer uh, on both sides, both of the uh, the bolts, while they were screw, uh, threaded into the starter motor, and the starter motor came out um, just like without any kind of effort, it just slided out. I disconnected the wire and um, I pulled pulled the uh, starter motor out of the way. Now let me just push this, put this away, and I'll show you something else as well. Which is um, this is the um, this power this is the uh, the lead that comes from the battery. Now I can't pull it all the way out because it goes down and it just has a connector in in between, and that connects to the starter motor. And at the moment, uh, although this is actually the um, um, the air conditioning pipes are sitting like this, they actually go underneath this um, this pipe here, uh, this one. So I just basically pushed it out of the way. That's why it's, it, it looks like that. What I also did was to make sure that nothing ends up inside the compressor. I just took some clean pieces of cloth and I just plugged the two holes for the air conditioning compressor. Now, my advice to would be for this job to be made very easy is to, if you take the car, if you have a perfectly good working air conditioning system, then just take it to um, an air, air conditioning refill place and ask them to just extract all the gas. Um, and uh, that way you're not losing any gas uh, in the process. And once you finish with the job, take it back and ask them to please refill. Um, I've also found a kit online which is uh, which allows you to do the whole job um, yourself quite easily and that's uh, quite simple because the high um, point and the low point for the uh, air conditioning systems are just uh, in the um, in the front just uh, when you take the the front bumper part off it's just two points you just screw them on press the let the gas in and that's about it so basically this is the um, this is where the starter motor was and I've now taken out now, the other thing is, um, you can probably see now that there is a pipe at the back. Let's see if I can get some light. Yeah, this pipe. This is the pipe that comes from the radiator at the front for the coolant system. Now, when I took this pipe out, a uh, small amount of uh, coolant fluid came out. Um, and I would say less than maybe half a litre or less. 
less than half a litre I would say and um, so basically once the system has been put together I'm just going to put the coolant system uh, so coolant back in also bleed the system for any kind of air that may have uh, entered into the uh, the cooling uh, system to make sure they work sufficiently and these are the two bolts for the um, air conditioning pipes that connect on top of the uh, the compressor like I said once you take these out the job is very easy uh, I mean you can probably it, it may still look very difficult but uh, once you take the pipes out there is plenty of space to work on it's uh, I can't stress enough that how easy that that um, the, um, you know by removing the pipes, how easy the job became. Uh, I also disconnected uh, this wire to make sure it doesn't get pulled, um, and uh, that's about it. So what I'm going to do now is once I get my new starter motor, I'm going to um, put that in and record further notes uh, if that helps. Um, so I'll thank you very much for watching the video and I'll catch up again soon.